Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to introduce our next speaker, but first I'd like to mention that um, everyone has been given or should have been given a, an evaluation form. If you haven't received one, they're available just outside that door. Please be sure to turn them in at the end. They're very helpful. Um, without further ado, I'd like to introduce Josh Zering, who is the owner of Full Speed Marketing. Howdy, good morning, good afternoon. Let's get really excited. I'm really excited to share this presentation. It's about six months in the making, and uh, it's something that I've been waiting to do and I'm super hyped up about. So number one, thank you all for coming. Number two, fill out those little tiny things at the end if you feel like you got some value from this. Hopefully you do. So how did we get here? What is this? A blueprint blowing up site. Okay, how did we end up here at Affiliate Summit in August, ready to talk about blowing up a website. Well, about once a week, my brother, who's 21 years old, comes to me and he says, dude, I got it. I said, what do you got, man? He's got the next big idea. He's super excited. He's like, all right, listen. And so every week he comes to me with some new harebrained idea. And so like the first week he came to me, he says, listen, why do we just put posters on flat walls? What if we put posters in the corner of the room so that they are 3D? I'm calling it cornerposters.com. I said, all right, uh, let's, let's wait until we get really some more legs on that one, but it's good. So the next week he comes to me, he says, dude, I've got this crazy idea. What if we made a website about, you know, like things that you do and that you're not happy with, you know, call it like I hate my life or something. I'm like, eh, there's been some competition in that space. It's already happened. Let's hold off on that one. So after about six or seven weeks of this, he finally comes to me. He says, all right, for real this time. I said, all right, give it to me. He says, there's this guy outside my apartment complex and he's selling these hats and all these kids are buying these hats for like 30 and $40 a piece. So, oh, what are these hats called? He says, they're called snapback hats. It's like Will Smith, like Jazzy Jeff from the 90s, like, you know, with the snaps, for real? He goes, dude, it's serious, everybody's into it. So I said, all right, let's, let's see how much legs it really has. So I jumped on Google Trends. And so he came to me in about March and I saw this graph here where that black arrow is, and I said, holy moly, he actually might have something. So I did some research, and I thought, wow, okay, snapback hats, this is great, sign me up. So I did some poking around, one of the domain names was available, and so in March, we bought snapbackhats.net and started building a brand. Um, you can see that the trend kept going a little while, we've sold the business since then, but I wanna share with you the trials and tribulations of taking something from literally nothing and exiting in four months, bootstrapping the whole way. So uh, these hats have a strong correlation with a rapper that I love called Wiz Khalifa. This is a guy who, if you like underground marketing, this is a guy you need to pay attention to. He releases mixtapes, everybody knows about him. If you're under the age of 23 and you don't know about Wiz Khalifa, well, you're kind of failing. So here's a, uh, here's a graph of Wiz Khalifa's um, popularity on Google Trends and you can see there's some serious popularity there. Now, unfortunately, he was arrested. He was, uh, he won a new, <laughs> he's, uh, yeah, he's arrested, which only helped his popularity. And uh, about the Super Bowl, he put his, uh, he put his song out right before the Super Bowl, and the, the song was called Black and Yellow. And so Pittsburgh Steelers go to the Super Bowl. He's from Pittsburgh. It's a big deal. Everybody's really excited about it. So Black and Yellow can make you some green if you're paying attention. Now, I'm not one to say that there is causation here, that Wiz Khalifa is the single sole reason that snapback hats are popular. But looking at the data, you can see that there is a very, very strong correlation between the two. Now, whether Wiz saw the same graph I did and said, I need to get on these hats, or whether he's the reason that the graph is like this is really unimportant. What's important is we found an item that has strong ties to popular culture, and it's something that's really, really popular, as evidenced by these two graphs. So why snapback hats? Why was this such an appealing idea? My brother came to me with 20 other ideas of things we could sell. Why did snapback hats make the cut? Well, it's a small product, low cost, high margin, easy to ship. Put it in an eight by eight box, ship it out, be done with it. Never hear from the people again until they make their next order. It is a high search volume. So 74,000 people are searching every month. This is when we started. 74,000 people every month are searching just for snapback hats. Now it's over 90,000 a month. 
and it has heavy ties to pop culture, so people are going to be familiar with it, they're going to be looking for it, it's trendy, it's popular, people are going to be happy to see this rather than that stupid ad I keep getting on Facebook for this rolling razor thing. This is something different, this is, this is something that we can market. So we had to come up with the tenets of our business. Now as affiliates, it's, you don't have as much control over this, but I highly recommend that everybody think very carefully about the things that the people that they choose to promote do. Um, when, you, when you sign up with somebody who has a restrictive return policy, or you sign up with somebody who has a terrible shopping cart, these are going to affect your conversions as an affiliate. So these are things you're gonna to wanna to pay attention to. So we opted, uh, against, I had much, much opposition to this from my brother, to have a super flexible return policy, as long as our merchant account would allow. So you could send back your hat unworn any time up until I think it was 60 days, and we're just gonna give you your money back. We don't care, give us the hat, let's be done with it. You didn't like it, we're sorry, can you tell us why? Here's your money back. So MIT's Sloan Management Review, which if you're in the MBA world or you wear a suit for a living, you'll probably have heard of this before. It's all about managing effectively and how do we make more money following numbers, and. It's kind of corporate for my taste, but I thought this was pretty poignant. Um, Jay Peterson and Kumar monitored an online apparel company for two years. Awesome. I was an online apparel company. I wanted to see what they had to say. So what did they find? Well, they put the same company against itself two years in a row. One year, super restrictive return policy. The next year, they had a very lenient return policy. So they doubled their referrals right off the bat. Lenient return policy means that people are going to feel comfortable recommending this because if things don't go right, they know that they're not screwing over their friend by now I have this crummy hat and it doesn't work very well. Um, so 0.8 referrals versus 1.6 referrals. That's a lot of referrals, guys. That's 200 or 100% increase. Average purchase increased 30%. The size of the orders went up by a third. Huge. Average profit at the end of the day also increased. So these are very important things to consider when you're looking at somebody's return policy or you're looking at somebody's uh, money back policy. These things make a difference. They help and they're only gonna help your marketing. So really important to stay focused on what is the customer experience. As affiliates, we sometimes lose sight of that, but it's something that can make a huge, huge difference in the back end. So did it work for us? We were an online apparel company and it did work for us. In four months, uh, we had one return, which uh, was in person, and somebody came and said, ah, we don't want this hat. Okay, here's your money back. We had one charge back. Somebody either did not get their hat or got lost in the mail, and we had one guy call us from California, and we said, what are snapback hats? They're showing up on my credit card, and I don't understand what they are. I said, you do not order a snapback hat? And he goes, a snapback what? I don't even know what this is. So that worked out really good because we were able to give him his money back before they charged it back for fraud. So pretty happy with the way that worked out. Now, we didn't try the restrictive return policy, but with results like this, why split test that? The other thing that we were really, really excited about was having great pictures. At the end of the day, we were an exact match domain. So our domain was snapback hats. We didn't have like a cool brand like snaps in the house or snaps for life or anything crazy like that. We just had snapback hats. So we had to differentiate ourselves from all of the other online merchants that had very, very serious brands and followings. So to do this, great pictures, great service, easy to use shopping cart. I know this sounds pretty basic, but when you consider that great pictures can help with your SEO, great service can help with your referrals, and an easy to use shopping cart will help with your conversions, the stuff starts to become less basic as you drill down into the analytics behind it. So one of the things that we were really proud of was a minimal one page checkout. We used a shopping cart for WordPress called Cart 66. We built and did the whole website on WordPress. Um, my brother is not very technical, so he needed something that was easy to use, and I needed something that was pretty robust for SEO. So we stuck with WordPress and this Cart 66 plugin. It's not free, it's like 100 bucks. Um, it worked out, we liked it. So quick one page checkout, as few forms as possible, and the other thing that we found was really important is don't ask for somebody's credit card information unless you show them on the same screen what they are buying. So if you're, if you're gonna ask them for their money, you need to make sure that on the same screen, they know what they're getting for their money. That's a big pet peeve of mine, and having listened to some people who are of not, not my generation use the computer, when they get asked for a credit card number or a PayPal, or they're not sure what it is they're buying, they get very skittish. So um, we had a, actually a lot of parents buying the hats for their kids. So this was something that I thought was like paramount importance. Here's a closer picture of the checkout. 
And uh, you can see, there's the hat, there's the total, there's the shipping, boom. And then enter your card and complete order. Also very important, your buttons indicate what you're gonna do. So after they hit this, their money is getting taken. It's important to relay that with a button that says complete order. Not next, not go, not finish. Complete order, your money is getting charged. So get ready for that. So promoting our site. We built it, we talked about how we're gonna run it, but now we have to promote it. And this is why everybody's here, because this is the hardest part. Anybody can build a site. We're marketers, we need to market the sites. So we started with the exact match domain. What this does is if you're not familiar with exact match domains, Google says that chances are if your website is coca-cola.com and someone types in coca-cola, there's a pretty good chance they're looking for coca-cola.com. So they give favoritism towards domains that match the keywords. Now, they give a little less favoritism for other keywords in the same niche, but if you're looking for a high volume keyword and you can get the exact match domain, it certainly won't, won't hurt your marketing. We tried Twitter. We jammed on a Twitter. I set up an alert on my um, tweet deck for snapback hats, and it was flying by. All day long, I was sitting there at work watching this go, 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 next, next, next. And so I would reply to people who are there. They're looking. They're buying snapback hats. Hey, I'm about to buy a snapback hat. Hey, I saw this sweet snapback. I mean, these are people who have money in hand and are ready to buy. And so I said, hey, here's a coupon code, 10% off. Check out our website. Check out our hats. Check out our selection. And I tried, and I tried, and I tried. I mean, this wasn't just one day of Twitter battle. This was a week. And I sent out, I don't have the exact numbers, unfortunately, but I was sending out probably 100 tweets a day. Here's a coupon code. Check out this hat. And I wasn't just blasting them with like, hey, here's snapback hats. They'd say, I want this bull snapback. And I'd say, here's 10% off on that bull snapback. I mean, this was really targeted. This wasn't spammy Twitter stuff. Not one sale. Not one sale. <sighs> At the end of the week, I was really, really frustrated with Twitter. And then we used Facebook, and we had the exact opposite experience with Facebook. Facebook worked really, really well to promote our product. I would say that the value proposition there, and I've hated on Facebook in the past. I've hated on social media in the past. And I still hate on social media, because without analytics behind it, it's kind of, a, it's kind of voodoo to me. But we put analytics behind it, we saw what worked, what didn't, and we attached revenue numbers to our marketing. So in doing that and calculating our ROI, we were able to say, okay, this whole social media stuff isn't too bad. But just a quick note, if you find somebody who's good at social media, um, don't tell anybody. They're like unicorns, and so if you tell someone, they're not gonna believe you. You know someone who's good at Twitter, dude? Uh, not really. So, Facebook, have awesome pictures. Have awesome pictures. You need to promote your product the best way possible. No one cares about your brand. Oh, dude, you're from Snap Hats USA. No one cares. Promote your product. People are looking for things they like. They're not looking for your brand. So promote your product and uh, always watermark your pictures. Here's one of the issues that we ran into was we had a hat on our site that was a Tasmanian devil hat. It was embroidered all the way down onto the brim. We bought it vintage. It retails for, I think, $130 on our website. Nobody bought it. This hat was gone. It, nobody would look at it, but everybody would check it out. It had one of the highest rates on the website of people checking it out, but nobody bought it during the four months that we had it on the site. However, the site, or the hat, worked as an excellent piece of link bait, because here was a blog that covered snapback hats, and so what they did was they found our website, they found our pictures, and they ended up writing an entire article about this one hat that nobody bought. However, at the end of the article, they gave us a great in-content, anchor-rich link. And I had to do nothing for this. This just happened because we took good pictures. Um, in the background of these pictures, we had a pool. There's people in the pool. It was very lifestyle oriented, which again, we're not trying to build the brand, we're trying to build the product. So good pictures will definitely pay off. In retrospect, I do wish we had watermarked them because now this picture is floating around the internet and we took it and we got no credit for it. So little watermark, be subtle. So, consider not touting your brand, but your product. Look for passionate engagement and let the community decide on standards. When we did Facebook, we had a, kind of a tough time adjusting. The demographic of people that we were finding for snapback hats had different standards of what they consider acceptable than perhaps my mom would. And so there was some swearing, there was different, you know, there was some name calling, and it was in good taste. I mean, it was playful, but it was the kind of thing that, am I offended by this? I don't know. I hope I'm not offending my fans. 
So you need to let the community decide on the standards. Facebook has some standards that they enforce, but other than that, you need to just kind of let it go. You can't be kicking people off and deleting posts left and right. Um, it's important that, yeah, if you say something that's unpopular, sure, but let it go. You're going to be better for it in the end. Um, people don't like censorship. It's just ingrained into them. So try to let as much go as you possibly can. So you need to identify with the fan. That's one of the most important things that we did is on top, picture, hats. This is about hats. This is about snapback hats. You like snapbacks, so do we. Um, get fresh is pretty much what we called our battle cry. And so what we did for our website is in every interaction with the customer, we wanted a piece of branding. And I hate branding. It's a fairy tale kind of fluffy thing that we can talk about all day long. And oh, it's very important for your branding. But at the end of the day, we didn't have a very strong brand. So we needed something to attach to it. And with, without you know, a memorable website name like Snap Hats USA or something like that, we wanted to do something that we could say at the end of every email, at the end of every Facebook post, that's something that we could um, drive home with the customer. And so we picked Get Fresh. Um, like, yo, that's a fresh hat. So that's what we picked, and um, we made it very clear what the page is about. Like us for discounts, pictures, contests, in that order. And then at the bottom, we put snapbackhats.net. Now, we might have been a little too subtle with the URL, because every day we still got people asking, what's your website? So there's that. But um, FYI, this worked really well for us. Clear call to action with the like button. Um, show the thumb. Tell people what to do. Tell them why to like you but definitely be careful about uh, making it too bossy. This is clear, get fresh, here's what we're about, here's what you can get by liking us, here's what you can expect on the page. So ask questions to create engagement. I know this is social media 101, but when you're taking it and applying it to different things, I figured I'd share some of the questions with you that we had, uh, we had really good success with. So one of the best questions that we ended up asking, and I had my brother running the whole social media campaign. Um, he's never, learned about internet marketing a day in his life, but he has an innate ability, as most young people do, to do this sort of thing and create engagement. So the most successful thing he wrote was, how do you get fresh in the morning? How do you get fresh in the morning? One sentence. We had like 150 responses. People were going down the line from toe, from head to toe. Snapback hat, bulls, you know, Adidas jersey, uh, Nike shoes. I mean, all the way down the line, brand, 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 brand. Here's what I do. Here's why I'm fresh. And then there were some great answers like, to get fresh in the morning, all I do is get out of bed. But this was huge engagement from just one question. And then the other thing that we had really good success was create a coupon code just for your Facebook fans. Now, this does two things. Number one, it makes your Facebook people feel really special. Oh, yeah, we're part of this club. We're getting a members-only discount, whatever. But it also lets you know how widely you're reaching. Because when this coupon code comes in, you say, nice, Facebook was responsible for this in some capacity. Whether somebody told somebody else, or at the end of the day, um, they went and purchased it themselves, they found something of value there. And then lastly, and people will disagree with me on this one. I'm totally down with that. Um, I, if you have some good questions at the end or good reasons why you should disagree with that, come at me, bro. But. Uh, don't hide your page behind a like. Show people what they're getting into. Why are you going to make it so exclusive that they can't see what it is other people are talking about? Generally, with the younger demographic, when you hide your page behind a like, I mean, I've asked people, what do they think is back there? Nothing. They think it's a sham to get you to hit the like button. And if you have a great community of people being engaged behind there, why would you not want to show that to the public? So don't content lock your Facebook pages. That's, uh, that didn't really work that well for us. And then lastly, know your audience, know your audience, know your audience. I'm going to show you a couple things that we did here and some ideas. So this was um, one of the updates that we did. And my brother uh, found some nice young ladies at the pool to model the snapback hats. And so with our URL at the top, there is a picture of three beautiful women. And it says snapbackhats.net. And they're wearing snapback hats. So this got 3,000 impressions. Pretty good if you're thinking about how much that cost, free but it only got 0.38% feedback. That's pretty low. So people hitting the like button or people giving us a response, that's pretty low. Now, this made no sense to me. I said, sex sells, right? Isn't this the old adage, sex sells? These are young males with money. Why doesn't this work? This should get all kinds of likes and all kinds of comments. Why doesn't this work? So I said, John, 
my, to my brother, John. I said, John, try something different. Let's see what it is we can do to get this engagement, this feedback number up. Because for, for us, this is important. This is going to ensure that more people see the Facebook page than they otherwise would have. So the next update was, this needs no words. And so this is a picture of Wiz Khalifa and Mac Miller, two of the people that um, are very, very prolific in the snapback hat scene, right? And so now we almost tripled our feedback. 1.15% feedback. So more people are reacting to this picture in black and white with no description, and it's 1.15% feedback. What is going on here? You're telling me that a picture of two dudes is getting more clicks and likes than three girls wearing snapback hats and bathing suits? What? That makes no sense. I said, all right, John, third iteration. I want you to kind of combine the two things, all right? Let's, let's try to get the engagement up, but let's try to promote ourselves a little bit as well. So here we go. 2.03% feedback. This was the winner. This was the winner right here. And so what we did is the comment is a lyric from a Mac Miller song. You can wear my hat, just make sure you give it back. That's a lyric from the Mac Miller song. So that was the gentleman in the previous picture. And then he's talking, in the music video, he's talking to this, uh, talking to this girl who's wearing his hat. And so, as the picture, we put the three girls wearing the hats, and this one was a runaway hit for us. So, know your audience. Yeah, sex sells and all that, and you know, oh yeah, let's, let's show some skin and we'll get some sales, but you know what? It's about knowing your audience and knowing what they're looking for. And so in this case, Wiz Khalifa and Mac Miller, combined with the women, worked out really well for us. So we ended up doing some Facebook advertising. I started one night after my brother was prodding me. He says, let's do some Facebook advertising. Eh, dude, I don't want to pay 70 cents a click for each like. Come on. And so I started with $5. I targeted Wiz Khalifa, Mac Miller, urban clothing stores, and young people. right? Um, and also people who like snapback hats, snapbacks, snaps, all that stuff. It was important to learn the vernacular here because people didn't always put, I like snapback hats. Sometimes it was just snapbacks, sometimes it was snap hats. You had to target pretty specifically. So when the ads started running, the budget blew away in five minutes. I mean, I'm sitting there, I go to get a cold frosty beverage, I come back to my computer, the budget's spent. I said, whoa, did I bid $5 a click or something? No, I had a good Facebook ad and it was getting served faster than the budget would allow. So I upped the budget. Here is the ad. Big picture of a hat, buy a pool, and the title is simply Snapback Hats. And I tell the consumer, I tell them exactly what I know about them. You like Snapback Hats. I know this because I can target them on Facebook. So do we. Hit the like button to join up with people who like crispy hats. This is one of our best performing ads. It kicked ass for us. This was the other one. The Chicago Bulls snapback hat in the snapback realm is uh, the like, best snapback to have. That's the one. You got the Bulls snapback, you're dialed in. So snapback hats, again, is the title. If you can appreciate the swag and freshness of a crisp snapback, hit the like button. Show people what they're, what they're getting. Tell them what to do. Make it clear. It's easy. But I mean, this is years of experience of failing on Facebook before I even got this campaign. So it's not that easy. Drive people to the fan page, foster the idea of community, identify their likes. So this is targeted advertising. I want people that like snapback hats, and I want them to like my page. So let me go over some statistics with the ad here. I'm full boat, open kimono. There's no uh, blocked out stuff here. You can see exactly how it performed. So 2.8 million impressions, 3,900 clicks, uh, 22, almost 2,300 likes. So I had a 0.135% click-through rate, which if you do Facebook, you will understand why I had a tear in my eye as I was looking at these statistics. Um, spent $232 on this ad. So what that ended up breaking down to was about a dime per like. Now if you do email marketing, if you do um, other kinds of marketing where you reach out and touch people, you'll know that 10 cents to be able to repeatedly market to somebody is a phenomenal value. Blows away anything else out there. So if you're looking for a value proposition, Facebook has it, you just have to try really hard to get it. Uh, I think in many ways this is better than email marketing because if we sent people an email every day and it had a picture of girls in it and it said snapbackhats.net, all right, well, whatever, that's gonna get deleted. But when it shows up in their newsfeed, it's innocuous, but it's conspicuous enough that they can look at it and they can act on it. And it also helps reinforce this idea of I need a new hat, where am I gonna go? 
Well, showed up in my newsfeed. And so it's just being able to reach out and touch people repeatedly, as marketers have known for years, is the way to do it. It's just now there's a cheaper, better way to do it. So I refined the ad a little bit. Um, I used Facebook Analytics, and I looked for the top clickers in gender, region. Um, there were some other, other parallels I looked at, but this was, uh, this was one of the best ways, was gender and region. And I just made new ads targeting those people. I used small budget, cost per click to test, and then I ramped up to CPM. One of the best things that we found was using the CPC, you can kind of get outlandish and you can try different stuff. Facebook makes it easy to experiment because you're not going to pay for it unless people are clicking on it. Now, you're only going to get a little taste of that total traffic rather than if you did CPM. But the best way that we found to do it was CPC to test, CPM once you've got something that wins. I mean, this is a formula that's been around for a long time. But um, being able to be creative with the advertising really worked for us. So some side notes on how to bolster Facebook. One of the things that we did with every order was we included a handwritten note that says, the best deals are on our Facebook page. Check it out. And that's all we said. We didn't make it any more complicated than that. But we did include a handwritten note with every single order saying, thank you for being a customer. We appreciate it. We hope you like your hat. The best deals are on the Facebook page. Thanks again. And then, you know, John or Josh or whoever, snapbackhats.net. Um, beware of people spamming your Facebook, right? We had, when we sold the business, we had 7,000 fans. And so what we would get is other people in the snapback game would come onto our page and just blow us up. Like, hey, we got the hottest hats and check this out. And almost probably because they didn't realize we were commercial. We kept it really low key, didn't really do a whole lot of uh, advertising. So handle them discreetly. You don't have to let them be on your page. The community never got upset when we just blasted people off the page and banned them. There were a couple people who would promote their blog that was kind of related to the culture. Um, and we actually let that stuff stay. And it went, ended up really good. There were some good comments and good engagement from that. So um, just get rid of the spammers and keep the people who want to engage with you, even if you know it sucks because you're like, wow, they're stealing our traffic. They're stealing our hard work. They're stealing our money. But at the end of the day, they're not. They're engaging with your brand. And so that sort of thing is going to look really good on your page. And as people show up there from the ad, they're going to see a lot of stuff going on. They're not going to see a paywall or a like wall. And then targeting is an acquired skill. Practice. It's cheap on Facebook. You can definitely have the budget to do it right. Track everything. We tracked everything. I got a little crazy with the Google Analytics. Uh, we used Get Clicky. We used specific coupon codes. We were really into tracking everything. Now, my brother, he didn't care. He saw the orders. Dude, we sold a hat. I said, dude, where did we sell a hat from? <laughs> oh, I don't know. Whatever. We sold a hat. Uh, I wish I could be that whimsical, but I think being an internet marketer has jaded me. I'm really into using uh, conversion, conversion tracking from Google Analytics. Set a goal. If your shopping cart will allow you, use the e-commerce uh, functionality. That way you can attach direct revenues to specific uh, platforms. What I did with a friend site who had a little bit more of a um, versatile shopping cart than I did is we set up uh, e-commerce tracking so that when he would get an order, we would know exactly how much that order was for. And at the end of the day, we would know what platforms were delivering the money. Now, the way we fixed this on our platform was we simply calculated, once we had enough data, right? Don't do this with three orders. Do this with 10, 100, 50 orders. We calculated the average cost per order, right? The average sale. And then we did goal tracking for each sale. And so the numbers were rough, right? We could not see if somebody from Facebook was ordering twice as many hats as somebody from Google. But this way, we had a rough idea of where the revenue was coming from. Um, let people think they're getting one over on you, right? You're a merchant. You're a store. You're out for money. You're a capitalist. People hate you. Um, Canadians in particular. I, I want to tell you a story that we had with a lot of people from Canada. So there was a bug in our cart that we, uh, we put in by accident that basically we did free shipping to the United States. And we charged people from Canada to ship to them because it was a pain in the neck. You had to write this whole form out and what's in the box and oh my god, it's a hat and is it going to clear customs? It was a time sink. So it didn't cost us any more money to send them the hat, but we took a lot more time. So um, we accidentally got an order from Canada without the Canadian shipping attached to it. Right? So he was getting the free America shipping, but ended up getting his hat shipped for free to Canada. All right, so we got the order. I said, all right, send it out. I don't want to deal with calling this guy and recharging his credit card and dealing with that whole disaster for $7. Cool. So uh, the next day, we got another order from Canada. Uh, okay. 
and it was also free U.S. shipping. And so the next day, we got two more orders from Canada, also free U.S. shipping. So what ended up happening was people must have been telling each other, like, hey, you can get the free shipping if you do this. And uh, it turned into a whole thing for us. We've gotten all these orders from Canada. Now, unfortunately, I guess there was a postal strike in Canada at the time, so it took them like a month to get their hats. It was kind of a crummy deal. We didn't know. Um, but so let people think they're getting one over on you, even if they're not. But it was a good piece of, it was a good example of how viral marketing can work in weird and strange ways. Use the uh, Facebook social widget to build proof into your website. This is something we had really good success with, where on the side of our website, we would put the uh, Facebook widget that says, hey, you know, 7,000 people like this. And, you know, we didn't split test it. We started this right from the beginning. Right as soon as we had 500 people that first night of advertising, we put this on the side of the site. And there was a study done by SEO Moz, and it was a correlation study of how many, how many sites on the first page of Google have this Facebook widget on them? And it was a really high percentage. I think it was over 70. Now, it could just be because that the best marketers understand that this stuff is important. Not to say that Google sees this as a ranking factor, but why not? Join the party. So we were happy to show that we had a good following and that people were excited about our stuff. And uh, also, it's cool because it shows your friends, I think. There's a little preference to your friends. So as you're going on the site working on it, like you see your friends like, yeah, I like this. I'm like, thanks for being part of the team. That's awesome, dude. I'm going to buy that guy a beer. So that worked out really good. So how important is Facebook, right? Because at the end of the day, this is what everybody cares about. You spent this money on advertising. You spent this money on building a community. You spent time upkeeping the community. You spent time getting rid of spammers. You spend time making the photos and spend time working on what you're going to write every day to people who like snapback hats. I got news for you. That first week, easy cruising. Yeah, snapbacks, this and that. What do you like? What's your favorite hat? Week two, that Monday, oh my god, talk about writer's block. Rough. Uh, do you wear your snapback hat with sneakers? Oh man, we went through a lot of ideas before we had something that we could like get on that second week. I mean, it got easier, but you run out of stuff to say pretty quick. So Google Organic, this was a, a sh snapshot of one week. Google Organic, far and away, uh, four times more popular than the nearest competitor. So we ranked uh, on the first page for snapback hats, number six. Um, that was our average ranking for the whole time. So it was uh, snapback hats, number six, and that was, I mean, that was the best we did. We didn't get to number five or number four. We were doing uh, not that hot on the SEO for this one. It was a side project. And so it was a uh, good example here that the next most popular one was Bing, so four sales. And then Facebook um, was the third most popular. But if you look, there's two Facebooks there. Mobile Facebook actually got us a sale. And then regular Facebook got us a sale. So it was actually the second most popular. And after doing the data for um, at the, when we sold the site, I took all the data and aggregated it. And these are an accurate snapshot of what we ended up seeing. So there is value in social media. And as far as I'm concerned, those were free sales. I mean, yeah, we spent the money up front to build the community. But this just was week after week after week we saw this. So yeah, we spent some money up front. But did we make money on it? Absolutely. And then poor Yahoo at number six. What happened, Yahoo? So how did it end up? Well. 7,500 fans. Um, at, towards the end, it was growing organically at 150 fans a week. We didn't have to do anything. We didn't have to advertise. People were seeing it on their friends' pages, and we had enough engagement that it was advertising itself. So as a value proposition goes, that's awesome. Um, if you calculate it out based on the numbers earlier, that's like $15 a week and just free likes. So that worked out really well. And you know, the more you get, the more you get. It's, it kind of feeds on itself. So the day after we closed escrow, I got this email from Gentleman's Quarterly. Uh, it's a men's magazine. And they said, hey, we love your site. We really like the experience. We want to feature you in our October edition of the manual. <sighs> Damn it. <laughs> I said, OK, that's cool. And I sent it to the, the guy who bought it. And I called my brother. And I said, do we want to back out of this now? Because I feel like this could be a big deal. And he said to me, no, we do not want to back out. I said, can you explain to me why you feel this way? Because I feel like being in GQ would be pretty damn cool. And he says, dude, GQ is the end of it. I said, I don't understand. He says, this started outside the apartment complex, and it kind of runs through youthful people, and it runs through young kids, it runs through the music industry, and it runs through all these different places. What is GQ? Well, it's a guide for people wanting to be cool that aren't cool. So when you see, you know, 45-year-old 
Uncle Jeff wearing your snapback hat, that's it. It's dead. Snapbacks are done. So he, was pre he made a very convincing case to me that, yeah, GQ is awesome, but GQ is the death of cool. So we are, uh, we're looking for the next thing, trying to be cool hunters. So I left plenty of time for questions and comments. Um, I suspect there will be some. There always is. And I would encourage you to come up to the microphone, and I promise I will not yell back at you if you yell at me. Awesome. What's up, dude? What's up, dude? <laughs> hey, um, I, I just wanted to know, in terms of the amount of backlinks that you had to the site when you sold it, what, what, what did that world look like? And uh, was there uh, certain keywords that you targeted or certain keywords that were just showing up randomly that actually made the balance shift for you where this, the product became very um, profitable? Mm -hmm. And then you said, okay, this, we, we've reached our peak, we're out. What was that? World? Okay, what so, did that look like? so the question was, what did the backlink profile look like when we sold the site? Thanks, um, thank you for the question. And so it brings up a couple good points. Number one, our exact match domain encouraged people to link to us with our keywords, right? We didn't have another name, it was Snapback Hats. So where do you buy this hat? You buy it at Snapback Hats. So that site with the uh, Tasmanian devil on it, actually linked to us with our keywords. So it, talking about ways to garner great backlinks, that's one of them. Um, the link profile, I mean, it looked pretty good. It was, we had a link from our Facebook page, we had a link from Twitter, we had links from social media. It was diverse and it was, you know, it was good. It wasn't a, a great backlink profile. We only ranked number six um, and we had the exact match domain. So that said, um, we could have done better, but as a time versus money argument, I had to work on other stuff. This was a side project that I was like, okay, awesome. I can finally go to one of these things and talk without worrying about breaking an NDA. So this was just a side project to do for fun. Um, but yeah, the backlink profile, pretty diverse, but we didn't have a ton of links. Um, a lot of that power, I think, was from the exact match domain and our good on-site SEO. One more thing I want to touch on is that when I looked at our conversions from Google organic, Almost every single one of our conversions from Google Organic was from Snapback Hats. Um, we got a ton of long tail searches. I mean, at one point, we had 300 hats on the site, I think. And so we'd get, you know, Cleveland Cavaliers Snapback Hat, uh, Chicago Bull Snapback Hat, Snapback Hat, you know, Houston Rockets, whatever it is. Almost none of those converted. The ones that converted were the people who were looking for Snapback Hats, saw our site, and then found a hat they liked, rather than probably somebody with a specific hat in mind, like, oh, I saw my buddy wearing this awesome Supersonics hat. I'm going to type that into Google, and I don't see it on this site. Fail. So that actually worked out pretty good for us. Did that answer your question? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I just wanted to make one observation about the, uh, the Facebook and how you um, evaluated uh, the percentage of people who gave feedback. And one thing that I noticed on, uh, on Facebook is uh, I, I like MLB.com. And something that I always want to comment on and that gets a huge response is when you say, caption this. You know, what is a caption? Or this person is doing blank. Okay. So I, I just wanted to make an observation yeah. that that seems to be a huge... Yeah, so Eric is saying that one of the great ways to get to get these engagements is to ask people to caption a crazy picture. Um, that's really, uh, that's a great strategy. Thank you for sharing that. That was awesome. Hey, uh, did, you, did you say how much you sold it for in the end? Uh, I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the question was, do I like apple pie? Yeah, yes, exactly. That's, what got. that's great. Thank apple, you. You got it. Thanks. En enough that it was worth it. Enough that it was worth it. Let me, let me put it like this. My brother uh, could have had a summer job working at Scoop and Ice Cream or you know, waiting tables, and when we when we cashed out, he was doing very very happily with his uh, with his share of the money. So. And was that the end game when you started? That you were gonna we we wanted to build it and launch it and just jettison it because I'm worried about trends, right? To be honest with you, I worry about trends. Um, I worry that this is the acai berry of the hat world, and it's cool now, <laughs> right? It's cool now, like oh, get that berry money, dude. But in a year from now, I'm gonna be like, why? Why did, I, why did I keep riding this train down? So we might have left a lot of money on the table. Um, towards the end, we acquired snapbackhats.com. And so in my head, I was like, you know, I could have a little CPS program. I could have a brand. It could be awesome. And my brother passionately talked me out of it, saying that at the end of the day, you got to be ahead of what's next and what's cool 
about to be cool rather than what's cool now. And so I think that if I had kept it and I saw it in GQ and I saw some guy wearing an Affliction t-shirt and wearing a snapback hat and he was like 50, I'd be like, okay, well, that was a mistake. So it would be the, it would be the cool kiss of death, yes, absolutely. Other questions? No? All right. Well, guys, oh, there's one in the back. Yell it, dude. The question was, was it a strategic buyer? Um, he had other snapback properties. So he saw the potential in what we had, and it was somebody who knew the space and was looking for, they wanted to upgrade. I mean, we had snapbackhats.com. That's a great value proposition for somebody who knows what the site and what the space is about. Um, they also liked that the, the shopping cart and the WordPress was all ready to go. I mean, it had been finely tuned. The analytics were there. The data was there. Um, when you're selling these sites, the more data you can give to somebody, yeah, it's, it's terrible to package up your baby and send out your winning formula out the door to potential buyers, but you have to realize these people, most of them are not out there to rip you off. They're legitimately interested in your site. Now, whether they're not able to afford it because you're asking more than they want to pay, sure, that's something to consider, and then you've given away a lot of proprietary information. But um, you have to realize you have a head start, you have something of value intrinsically, more so than just your analytics data or your keywords. There's something there, the site ranks, the site converts. You've got something more than just, here's all my information, go rip off my site. And we did have competitors. We actually had a competitor who, and I'm pretty upfront, like I posted this project on Wicked Fire, um, a popular internet marketing message board, from like day one. I mean, I made the site, I was proud of it. I was like, check this out. So on a forum of internet marketers, I showed them my brand new shiny project. Um, if, you're, if you're talking about fostering competition, I mean, that's kind of that's what I was after. So we actually had a competitor who bought snapback hats with a Z.com and just totally, totally took us to school. I mean, he outranked us by the time we sold it. He copied our template. He copied our pictures. I mean, it was pretty terrible. Um, but at the end of the day, he did not have the same reach we did with you know, a friendly experience. You try to use his site, there's all kinds of Java, Ajaxy stuff going on. Shopping cart was not friendly. Yeah, I mean, he may have whooped us with the marketing, but really, I think that his experience suffered, and I know what my conversion rates were with something that was pretty finely tuned. I have to wonder what his conversion rates were with something that was a lot less finely tuned. Okay, a couple, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get to you first. Uh, the question was, did I try AdWords? Yes, I did. We spent uh, $100 on AdWords and made $150 in revenue. The thing that I did not like about AdWords were there were big brands in the space, and so they could afford uh, snapback hats to be their lost leader. So they would bring people in for hats, and they would end up buying. Their, their average order was much higher than ours, right? This is how the math worked out, that we would sell two or three hats in a good order, right? That's like, yes, dude, nice because um, we built in the cost of shipping to each hat. So we would not lose money even if you ordered one hat. When people doubled up and bought two and three hats, we pocketed the shipping money. That was just gravy for us. So I think what was happening was the bigger brands that sold more than just hats were using that snapback hats because it had high traffic and it was reaching their demographic. And so what would happen is they would bid higher for clicks than we could afford um, with a reasonable ROI. I'm not going to be in this to do uh, you know, 500 bucks in AdWords, make 600 bucks in revenue, and then pocket $30 at the end of the day. I'm not into that. So um, as a value proposition, we tried it. It did have a positive ROI, but just for the amount of care and love that it needed, um, it wasn't a viable, viable option. And then the other thing, too, is, yeah, you get the customer's information. You get their email address when, they make, when you make a sale. But to put that money and put it into something like a Facebook ad that you then can reach out and touch them anytime you want, and it's way cheaper to acquire a customer um, on Facebook than it is to acquire a customer on AdWords, you just, we had limited funds, right? We bootstrapped the whole thing from the ground up. Um, we bought the first domain for 300 bucks. So the whole thing was bootstrapped, and just as a value proposition, we could not make AdWords work. Good question, thank you. I had this gentleman next here. Um, what did you use to sell the website? Did you uh, use a certain marketplace, or? Um, it's actually funny. The way I got in touch with the guy who ultimately bought the website was, oh, the question was, how did I sell it? Um, the way I ultimately got in touch with him was I hit him up for a link because I saw he had all these sites and he's like linking snapback hats. I said, this is awesome. Uh, let me see what this is about. And so 
I hit him up. We started talking. He's like, hey, is that for sale? We ended up doing a lot of negotiating, but the site was on Flippa. Um, I've had good success there, but for high dollar sites, I find it's getting harder and harder to have um, high dollar sites on there because people are looking for like, listen, buy this $100 blog network of .info domains and you're gonna make $20 million a year. <sighs> That's tough to compete against. My snapback hat site is not going to make you $20 million a year, and it's not $100. So when you're sitting there next to a listing like that, that's tough. But people who know what they're doing are looking on there for value. And so I think it's a good place to find connections, and you may ultimately close outside of Flippa, right? You may close in you know, a private email or you know, um, on the phone. You may just find Flippa a good place to find potential buyers. I think we had a question back here. So the question was, how did you do your product sourcing? This is probably my favorite part of the whole business. Um, my brother found a guy outside of his apartment complex, and actually we ended up buying a whole bunch of hats from him the first time out of the trunk of his car um, at night in a parking lot. So the, the first set of snapback hats could not have been any shadier. Uh, <laughs> we, had a, we had a good old time with that. But, um, and the hats were ungodly expensive. One of the things that we found in this space is that people are just ripping you off so bad to get to the person who sells the hats first is an amazingly difficult task. So we would get middleman after middleman after middleman, each one shadier than the next. And it's like, dude, I'm gonna give you a great deal. 100 hats, $19 a hat. What? I thought it was 1,000 hats for $14 a hat. Well, that's if you buy 2,000. What? So there was a lot of that stuff going on. What ultimately ended up happening was um, my brother, resourceful as he is, was on Craigslist in California and found a guy selling snapback hats. Decides to call up one of his buddies, drives to California, meets this guy on a Sunday in an abandoned warehouse full of snapback hats. Now, I told him, I said, I hope this works out good because the next time you do this, it probably will not work out as well as it did this time. Uh, he called me and he said, all right, dude, I got a guy. He's the original wholesaler. He's got thousands of hats here. And I said, all right, carte blanche. Just get one of everything, put it in the car, drive it on home. We live, we live in Tempe, Arizona. So this was a six hour drive. Um, and so we found this guy, he does wholesale, he has all the hookups, but finding him, we went through six guys before we found him. And actually one of the biggest problems that we had was sourcing the hats was we, we would sell out of a hat. And people would write to us. We always made a really easy contact form on our website. Yeah, really important. Easy to use contact form that tells people it sent an email to the people who own the site. Um, and so we would get like, hey, I want this Cavalier's hat, but it's out of stock. Well, we don't know where to get another one. If you know, let us know. Um, that was frustrating, and I think that ultimately hurt our revenue. Once we got the, um, the new snapback supplier, our margin uh, went up by a factor of two, and our sales, um, both the number of hats and the average sale went up as well. So it's all about finding the right people to get your product from. Um, it would have allowed us to start an affiliate program. That's where we were going if we didn't sell the site. We had enough margin that we could say, this is awesome, let's bring in other people to do this for us. So. It's all about where you get it from, and you cannot be afraid. Well, you should be afraid. I would not go to that warehouse. But you can't be afraid to reach out and try to find creative problems to your, uh, creative solutions to your problems. Other questions? Yes, sir. How did you weigh uh, the pros and cons of free shipping versus showing a lower upfront product cost and the tag and shipping on your shopping cart? Okay, so the question was, how did I weigh the pros and cons of uh, building shipping into the product price and having a lower price but then adding shipping at the checkout? Um, that's an excellent question. One of the things that I really like about um, good e-commerce sites is they say free shipping. Look at Zappos. Look at these other sites that do free shipping. I wanted to be able to do that on our site. And I knew that if we didn't price our hats totally crazy, um, we could do that. We had hats that nobody else had. We had a value proposition that said, okay, we have you know, a $25 hat. Yeah, it's $2 more than this other store, but it's free shipping. So it was all about having the margin to be able to play with that. Um, and again, like I said, the margin is what lets you be creative in this space and say, I want to do free shipping. I want to do an affiliate program. Um, and so I wanted the big free shipping badge. I put it right at the top of the website. Free shipping, it was orange. Nothing on the, else on the website was orange. And um, you know, we didn't try it another way. We didn't charge people for shipping. And the reason for that is, and I hate to admit this in public, it was too complicated. Can't, we couldn't figure out the international shipping. We couldn't, it was going to be a disaster. Screw it. Free shipping. Other, uh, other questions? 
All right, good. Well, my name is Joshua Ziering. I run a small digital advertising agency in Tempe, Arizona. Love to talk to you about your creative problems. And you can hit me up at my blog at fullspeedseo.com or my website, fullspeedmarketing.com. I had a blast doing this. Thank you, guys. Please, if you got something out of it, fill out that sheet. Thank you.